It is 20,000 pounds, 21 feet high, 36 feet in diameter. It took three months to design and build. It is the Wheel of Pain, and it is next. Dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. Day two of the 2021 Rogue Invitational from Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas, and we're kicking things off with the Strongmen. Three events on the day for them, but up first, it is the Wheel of Pain. Thank you for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland, alongside former Europe's strongest man, Lawrence Chalet, and you said it earlier, pushing 20,000 pounds, great way to start the day. We're waking them up with a bang. <laughs> this is all about pain, it's in the name. This one is going to be brutal, and the guys, they are dreading it. It's an amazing bit of kit. I went and had a look at it earlier, and I'm glad to be watching and not competing. <laughs> Let's take a look at the overall standings for the strongman coming into day number two. Martins Leeds did not win an event, but he is on top of the overall leaderboard by two points over Tom Stoltman and Alexei Novikov. Brian Shaw is just three points out of first place, and JF Corona, Rob Kearney, they are very much in contention here with three events remaining. Event... Number three, it is the Wheel of Pain brought to you by Beyond the Whiteboard. Beyond the Whiteboard, the workout tracker built for people who take their gains seriously. Fitness is a journey. Start tracking your gains with a free 30-day trial. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon with more on the Wheel of Pain. Guys, the rules of engagement for this Wheel of Pain are as follows. You've got to keep both hands on the rope portion. You've got to stay facing forward. You can't push it with your back. You can't put your head underneath. There's a couple of guys who are attempting this for the first time in the competition setting, and they're going to have to adapt to the pain quickly. Thank you, Kiki. You said you had a chance to look at this. For the strongmen who have not had a chance to get their hands on this thing, what's going through their heads right now? They're going to be a little bit nervous because this is very different to a push-pull type event that they may be used to. Tom Stoltman is a great athlete, and he's got that size and power. He's done very well on similar e events in the past, but he doesn't have experience on this bit of kit, so it could be the, a slight question mark in the back of his head. Guys like Kiliushkovsky, Novikov, Lysis, they've all performed extremely well on this event in the past. They know what to expect. This is an event that is going to cause pain. The lactic acid is, going to, acid is going to build up in the quads. They're going to be fighting hard. It's not too hard to start with, but 60 seconds in, they are going to be screaming. <laughs> One minute to push this thing as far as you can, and it's going to be Mikhail Shilvikov, who is up first. The Siberian force trying yeah, to exert some force here on this 20,000-pound wheel of pain. Go. So Shivnikov is our first athlete. Starts the wheel of pain off. He's driving sideways there, using a slightly different technique. He's got to keep his hands on the pillars, keep pushing hard. Now, in the past, when this first showed up in 2019, you could push it any way you could. They allowed some athletes to put their shoulders on it. Hathor Bjornsson actually did that. I think Novikov did that as well. They've taken that away. How does that change you know, how you approach this? Well, they know exactly what they've got to do now. So obviously, the first year we saw this piece, piece of kit, athletes weren't sure the most effective way. And as promoters, we weren't sure about the safest way. So mm. we're trying to focus on two things here, keeping the athletes as safe as possible, but also the most effective way. And that's um, how we've decided. You can see there how, because of the sand in the barrels, once you stop, it rocks back. You cannot stop pushing with this piece of kit. In 60 seconds, it might not sound like a long time, but trust me, when you're giving 100% effort for that time frame, you are screaming inside. Good solid start there for Shivlikov. He's limping away. We know he's not in his best form, but he's still fighting hard. He's a warrior, and he puts the first distance of the day in. Looks like he got about half a rotation on that thing. We'll have to wait for the uh, official scores, but... He's almost apologetic there to the fans. He, he knows he's not in his best shape. He's such a... a, a Incredible athlete when we do see him at his best. You can see there he's in pain. 
hope we, he, 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 hope he takes the time off that he no, needs, no, no. lets himself recover, and we get to see the best of him again next year. Because as I say, what a competitor when he's in top shape. It is really a testament to the event and the desire for the athletes to be here with Rogue. A lot of them showing up, not at 100%, but still wanting to come and put on a good show. Who wouldn't want to compete here? This is such a huge event. These athletes have put the work in over the years. I, a part of me would love to go and give that a go, but the other part of me is quite happy sat up here and not worrying about needing oxygen after 60 seconds. <laughs> we saw one man push that thing for half a rotation, and it's taken about, what, six or seven people to get it back to where they need to to start that? It just a, shows you how difficult it is to move this object. And you mentioned the sand in those barrels on the right of your screen. You cannot get any sustained momentum on this. It's just like pushing a car through mud. Absolutely. It's not like a, a vehicle where that momentum starts mm -hmm. to build up and speed builds up. It really doesn't. You've got to keep working hard. with ev Every single time the foot drives into the floor, you're trying to give maximum force. And let's remember, these barrels were used for individual events in the CrossFit Games. They have eight of them to push in this epic piece of kit. Yeah, those barrels first showed up on an implement called uh, the, the Slug, and they were used at the 2018 CrossFit Games. And the athletes had to pull them. And just one. Just one. <laughs> not eight of them. <laughs> plus all the wood that's on top. <laughs> I mean, what a magnificent piece of kit. 55 feet is the score from Kyle Shivlikov. And Jerry Pritchett will be up next once everything is reset. It's been interesting watching a lot of the guys train for this event. Because obviously you cannot <laughs> build one of these in a gym. I mean, I guess you could, but it's, it's not your everyday piece of kit. I've seen guys pushing truck to, uh, tractors pushing sleds up hills, all sorts of different methods to try and get used to the feel of this kit. Jerry Pritchett will be up next. Mikhail Shivlikov score of 55 feet and 9 inches was the last mark we saw. Jerry's one of these athletes that I've seen pushing his car up hills. That's a good way to train this because you can't build up that momentum when you've got a slight incline. So. Paired well on it, let's see how he performs in this, the Wheel of Pain. It's such an epic name. You mentioned and yesterday that he works as a metal fabricator. He, he had to kind of make an apparatus that he could put on his truck in order to duplicate this. Yeah, he's, um, he's very good at making kit. Very good athlete as well. And I think, I think he can perform well on this. He'll want to get some good points. He's been saying his, his, his injuries are healing up. Some events he's not quite back to his best, but he feels he can get some good points on this one. He's just composing himself, mentally preparing himself for the pain to come. As I say, the, the start of this event, it's not too hard for those first few feet, but you get 40, 50 feet in and the legs start cramping. The blood is filling up in them. And it's as if you're trying to, like you said, it's almost like quicksand. Mm -hmm. You can, it feels like your legs just get heavier and heavier with every single step. What we got? Jerry Pridgett, one of the, the taller athletes, is there an advantage to being taller, shorter on this? Not really. I, I believe they have the option to choose whether they want to go for the lower mm -hmm. bar or the higher bar. So the height isn't such an issue tends to suit the fitter guys. Yeah. That's, you know, a truck pull some c can sometimes suit the bigger guys because you have that mass to move mass. But because you don't get any momentum with like wheels rolling on this, the sand keeps dropping down, yeah. it tends to be the guys that their endurance is a little, a, a little better, a little bit fitter, that can produce those longer distances. And Jerry Pritchett coming in in ninth place overall with five points, but he's only two points back of Luke Stolman for eighth, and he's seven points out of a spot in the top five. I don't think we're going to see Jerry challenging the podium today, but there's big prize money up, and he's going to want to fight for every single position. So this is his chance now to start climbing up the list. Jerry Pritchett, 60 seconds, trying to beat Mikhail Shivlikov's mark of 55 feet 9 inches. It's a good solid start. You can see the power going into every step he makes. He's got good body positioning there. But you can see you can't pick up that pace with this. Every step, it's the same speed, and you've just got to keep working hard. Going well, though. 
And the way that floor is laid out, there are some steps there. They can get a little bit of leverage there. Can do. It looks like he's got a, some grippy shoes on. I thought they were climbing shoes. I'm not sure that they are now, looking at them. It's quite hard to see in the light there, but he's trying to get... Oh. 15 seconds Taking to go. a breather. And you can see Mikhail Shivakov's nameplate there. That's where his mark is, and Pritchard trying to get close to that. Jerry's just spent that. The effort that it takes to push this, it just drains the athlete so fast. You really, you really need to be able to give 100% for 60 seconds, which just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's that time limit that's so hard to keep pushing. Well, especially under a load of that magnitude. 20,000 pounds. As you say, you see how many people it takes to reset it. Is Jerry's mark? It should be about 50 feet, 8 inches, if I'm estimating. So Shivakov will still have the, the top score, but we're only two athletes in, and Luke Stoltman will be up next. Pritchett's distance there, 56. So if he did. So he's gone ahead. Interesting. Of okay. So the official measurement, 56 feet for Jerry Pritchett. Didn't look that way on the uh, on the floor, but he must have started from farther back than did Chiplikov. <laughs> Pritchett with the top mark. That's what I get when I try to estimate things. I think he's glad that one's out of the way now. I think they all will be. Yeah. This is an event we could see oxygen, we could see athletes being sick. It's, mm -hmm. it's such an exhausting event. Obviously, tremendous strength required to push these things, but the endurance that's needed, the fitness. And it's one of those events, you know, some events, if you're really good, you can just bang them out really right. quickly. It doesn't matter how good you are at this event, it's going to be painful it's going to be exhausting your body is going to be zapped of energy at the end of it and the interesting thing with this event looking there with five guys pushing it back <laughs> how fatigued will they be in the legs going from this to the super yoke right. which is event number four and we you know, can't discount what happened yesterday with the deadlift and then a very challenging event in the sear bell ladder those take its toll they do indeed but this one more than any other event could really zap your energy for what's to come Think back to 2019 when this first showed up at the Arnold Strongman Classic, and you mentioned that it can really wreck athletes. You know, Hathor Bjornsson really, he was worse for the wear after this event, and as was Alexei Novikov. The two Novikov, of them yeah. really suffered through this. And Novikov's the guy, that he, you know, he doesn't have an off switch. He will push and push and push. I'm interested to see the battle between Novikov and Lissis, and possibly Kiliashkovsky as well. We haven't seen the best of him yet, but this is an event he's won before. And he wants to be climbing up the list. You know, he's a name people thrown about that could potentially be a winner of this event. He needs to start proving that he's back and ready to contend with the best on the planet. They're trying to make sure they get it reset at exactly the right spot. And with the sand in those barrels, that can be a little tricky to be precise with a 20,000 pound implement. One of the helpers there, Trey Mitchell, winner of the Shaw Classic this year, a, a young athlete that is on the rise. I'm sure we're going to see him in this contest in years to come. He's our official tester for this weekend. Very specific, making sure it's exactly in the right spot. Not the easiest thing to do with such a heavy piece of kit. And for those of you that don't know, this implement is fashioned after the one that showed up in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie from the 1980s, Conan the Barbarian. And really the only difference between the one in the movie and the one you're seeing here is the one in the movie is much taller. They couldn't make it that tall for the Arnold Strongman Classic because if they did, they wouldn't have been able to fit it into the building. <laughs> Let's send it back down to Kiki Dixon with some fans who are taking a particular interest in this event. I found a couple of CrossFitters who were observing the Wheel of Pain action. Chris, this is the first time you've seen this live. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think it's probably the equivalent of a sled push for us, but these guys are pushing, what, 20,000 pounds, something like that? So super respectful of what they're doing out there. 
and Dan Bailey, you've actually had a go with this a couple years back. What was that experience like? I did it, the 2020 uh, yes, Arnold Classic yes. for World's Strongest Man. I got to walk out on the floor and give it a push, and I was able to take the slack out of it, and then I just kind of hit a wall. That was kind of <laughs> it after that. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Kiki. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think Dan Bailey's posterior chain may have suffered some damage to that <laughs> after that as well. I think he's been a little coy with us. We have Luke Stoltman up next. Very powerful individual, big, strong legs. He comes in in eighth place overall with seven total points. 56, 55, nine is the score to beat. So Shivalkov does have the top time. Jerry Pritchett was at 51 feet. So Luke driving hard. He's in good position there. He just needs to keep this going. He's got big, powerful legs. He's got good body weight. His endurance isn't too bad as well. He needs to keep working hard. He's almost halfway through now, and he needs to keep driving hard with every single step into that ground. A great pace for really well. right now. He can keep this up. He can set a good distance. He needs to keep working. This is where it gets hard now. He's got to dig deep. Stoltman is your new leader. Look at that lactic acid just catching up with him, but he's getting it going again. He's got to keep working now. He needs as much distance as possible. He's got into the lead, but there's some big, strong athletes to come after, so he needs to set the mark. Keep working. Keep working till the end. And that's a good distance there set Impressive by Luke Stoltman. Impressive effort from Luke Stoltman to take the lead unofficially right now, 84 feet. And that will Spicy. certainly help him as he tries to move his way into the top five. He's only five points back of JF Caron for fifth place. I think Luke will be very pleased with that. As we said, the Stoltmans have never used this piece of kit before. It's not a bad performance at all. Impressive effort from Luke Stoltman. And like you mentioned, the first time that he has gotten his hands on the wheel of pain. It's so funny watching an event like this because you saw yesterday Novikov on the dumbbell, the big cheer to the crowd at the end of it. You often see that with a lot of these strongman events. When an athlete does well, they turn to the crowd, they react from that reaction, but you're not going to see that on this event. They are exhausted at the end. Even when they do well, you're just going to see them collapsed over that bar, potentially on the floor, gasping for air. We may even see some oxygen tanks out at some point. So thanks to Luke Stoltman, the crew doesn't have as far to push it to reset it, so I'm sure they're, they're grateful for that. The three athletes down, and Akilos Koski is up next, and he currently sits in seventh place with nine and a half points and didn't get off to the best start yesterday. He didn't record a score in the deadlift, and then I think maybe didn't live up to expectations in the sear ladder. So Akilos Koski, uh, he actually told everyone yesterday, two weeks ago, pulling 880 pounds, he had a small tear mm -hmm. in his lat. So he was extremely worried about the deadlift. The dumbbell in the past has been his best event. He's the current world record holder for maximum weight. He scored decent points. I think he got th he ended up on the 280 dumbbell. But he didn't look as convincing as we've right. seen in the past. Obviously, he's coming back from a, a tricep injury. He's had four surgeries on that tricep. So the last one only being four months ago as well. So he's not had a huge amount of time since that surgery. I think to be lifting the weights he did was very impressive. Now, this event shouldn't affect any of the injuries, and he's won this event in the past at the Arnold's. Last year, he was the winner on the Wheel of Pain. I think we could see a, a good performance, and he's going to need to step down now and really put full throttle on to try and get himself back in this contest. Currently sat in seventh place, but he is a very dangerous man. He's got some good events to come today and he needs to make that move now. He will want to be winning this event, so, and with knowing that we've got big names still to come, he has to give everything. Meanwhile, Luke Stoltman's score has updated, officially now 73 feet, nine inches. And one more look at the last part of his effort. The power going through each step. You can never generate that, that, that speed, but he kept working hard till the end. You can see he's just holding on, keeping himself supported there, the, the exhaustion. I cannot explain to people how tough this event is. Unless you've actually tried it, it's brutal. 
back in 2019, I was able to just sort of get my hands on it a little bit. And like Dan Bailey said, I maybe got a little bit of the slack out, and then there was no way that thing was moving any farther. It was yeah. Well, like I said, like I, I, <laughs> I could push it for 10 meters, no problem. You know, 10, 10 seconds. Sorry. But when you start going over 30, 40 seconds, 50 seconds, and your legs just feel like they're stopping to work, it's, it's a very strange and, and actually a, a horrible feeling. There's Kiyoskowski, and it is much warmer here at Dell Diamond today than it was yesterday. There's been a pretty high wind blowing through this place for the last couple of days. It has helped cool it down. But that is now gone today. And the temperature has increased. Kiyoskowski knows he needs to step up now. Interesting. No knee sleeves, no compression shorts. He wants the blood to be flowing as freely as possible. One of the fitter athletes as well. He comes with a faster pace, the more endurance type events. Very, very powerful legs. If he can get himself into the top five with a strong result here. He's only two and a half points back at JF Caron for fifth. Yeah, I think he knows he's still in with a shot. But he also knows this, is, this has to be a big, big performance. Yesterday, with the deadlift, he knew it would be his worst, worst day. It's all about climbing back up that leaderboard now. 73 feet 9 inches. That was the last effort we saw from Luke Stoltman. That is the mark to beat for Mateusz Kuliuszkowski. Here we go. Nice low positioning there. Big steps. Athletes have to you know, take a different approach. Some go for smaller, quicker steps. He's going for big, powerful steps on every single drive. Calf's working hard there. Glute's working, he's keeping his arms straight out. And if he can keep going, we've seen no one's managed to keep going without stopping. I think Kiliuszkowski has the, the, the tank to keep pushing himself for the full 60 seconds. We'll hit 30 seconds there and he's still going strong. He has already left Shiblikov and Pritchard in the dust and about to pass Stoltman. He's slowing down, but he's still moving without stopping. He needs to keep this momentum, keep pushing, keep driving. Look how hard he gets through at 43 seconds now, and he's slowing down, but he's not stopping. He's keeping it going. Come on, Kiliuszkowski, keep moving. Legs just stop working. You, you, you want to keep it moving. You want to keep trying, but the blood fills up in there, and you just they just stop working. He continued to push, and Kiliuszkowski will be your new event leader. We'll wait on the uh, official score right now, listed at 78 feet. But that is the effort that Kieliszkowski needed in this event as he looks to move his way up the leaderboard. They get to that 40 second mark and their bodies are just breaking down. Mentally, you tell yourself to keep going, but your body just isn't capable. And you mentioned that he has won this event before. This is only the third time we've seen the Wheel of Pain in the Strongman competition. Martins Lietzitz is the other man who has won this event. That was back in 2019 at the Arnold Strongman Classic. And then last year, he finished second to Kilos Kossi. So Martins Lietzitz has the advantage of going last and the advantage of being very good at this event. He's very good, and he knows the target to beat. That's, that's very important. One more look at... Kieliszkowski's trip around here with the Wheel of Pain, and, and you mentioned it. Really big strides and a great pace to start. Yeah, he's going for big steps. I think we'll see different tactics from different athletes, but these are big, powerful steps. Could potentially burn your, your quads out a little bit quicker. As I mentioned, he is a very fit athlete, but so is Lichis, so is Novikov. So having Kieliszkowski set the pace for them I think if they can get within touching distance with 20 seconds to go, it allows you to dig that little bit deeper. When you see that marker to beat, sometimes you can just find that little bit extra. When you have to go early and you're setting the pace, it's tough to just keep going and going, not knowing what the distance is needed. See there, he's still going for the big steps, but they slowed right down. He may have been more efficient to just shorten the steps a little bit. In the end, there's just nothing left. And this is a fit man, particularly when we were talking strong man. Maybe not fit compared to the crossfitters that we'll see later, but as a strength athlete, he's a very fit individual. And you talked about exhaustion, and you could just see it setting in there. I mean, a guy with that much power pushing as hard as he was, as I'm sure at the end of that effort, just the thing did not budge. No. 
Rob Kearney will be up next. Kearney sits in sixth place overall, 11 points. Rob Kearney coming back from, not only coming back from injury, but also he suffered with cancer and he's come back to compete. He's recovered fully. Spoke to him very recently about that. Very open and honest man. Just the fact that he's competing in this show is incredible. But I'll tell you something, he'll give 100% and he's got some great events today. This one being one of them. He's performed well on this in the past. He's got the targets to beat. We know he's not the biggest guy, but he's got one of the biggest hearts and he is gonna give 100% here today. Send it back down to Kiki Dixon. We spoke earlier, and you said you consider yourself a super fan. How much fun are you having at the Rogue Strongman Invitational? Yeah, we're having so much fun. It's so great to see everyone. It's a spice in time today. We're loving it. Seeing everyone put on those muscles, pushing hard. It's the best. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. A lot of strongman super fans here. I love this. It is a dedicated community. It is, and she really was a super fan. She had a Novikov <laughs> top on. She had spicy Stoltman chilies around the neck. And I think she had a Lisi's headband around the, the quad there. So she's supporting plenty of the athletes today. A yeah, great turnout here for the, the first event for the strongman. And you know, mentioned there is a CrossFit co competition going on as well. So some of the fans here for that. But this is the first time that they've gotten to see these athletes in action. And I know yesterday, everyone their jaws dropped when they watched what Alexei Novikov did on the on the sear bell ladder. I think everyone in the building was impressed with that. And you can't not be. 300 pounds. It's incredible. After doing all the others, well, unbelievable performance. So far for me, the performance of the weekend. So Mateusz Kieliszkowski's score now 83 feet, 6 inches. Beats Stoltman by nearly 10 feet. Bernie just mentally preparing himself. He's got the elbow sleeves on. He's got the wrist wraps on. Often you find athletes that wear them. They just, they just get into the habit of it. They feel a little more secure, a little more comfortable. There's Rob Curry. Rob gets off to a good fast start there. Shorter steps than we saw from Kiliuszkowski. Driving hard. Going very well here. This is a nice, steady performance. Already up at 20 seconds, but the distance is moving. Technique doesn't vary between, too much between athletes, so it's all about how much drive you've got, how much you want it, how much you're willing to keep pushing. He's starting to see the marks now that he can come through. Pick up points. Every time he goes past a marker, it's more points. He's past Pritchett and Shivlikov. Going down there. It's almost like the brakes just hit. And again, 30 seconds, no problem. Once he got over that 30 second mark, it's just as if your body stops working. Really good effort from Rob Kearney. Looks around, he knows he's got some points. He's beaten a few of the guys. Get the official distance in a moment for you. Now the, the problem for Kearney right now is that the two guys he beat are behind him in the overall standing. So he's got to try to pick up some points on some men who have not yet gotten on the wheel of pain. Yeah, I mean, last time we saw Rob on this event, he did it extremely well. He is coming back from injury and surgery and recovering from cancer. As I said, just the fact to be here competing is incredible. His, his achievements and... Like, last 20 seconds. Oh, see them all walk away, they are exhausted. There's no celebrating after this event. Just have nothing left. Look how quick he started well. I was impressed here, he was moving well. The problem is, if you go too hard on the first half, you have nothing left. You need to understand energy expenditure. How hard do you go for that first half so you have something left to keep pushing to the 60 seconds? He's 
Kearney with a pretty steady pace. And like you said, this is where he started to pass some pass some of his fellow competitors. Yeah, you got Jerry Pritchett's mark there, but suddenly it's like the brakes hit. Slows right down, he gets past Shivlikov, and then it's just every step from there is brutal. Similar to what we saw with Kieliszkowski, just st still trying to exert himself as hard as he can, but just nothing left in the tank. Oh, now yeah. talking some things over with Martin Glitzis, who will be the last man to go. She's okay. the biggest fan there. <laughs> That's all I got. About that, that athlete sign. So, that was terrible. That, no, that was well played. <laughs> Just trying to stay cool, stay focused. Much warmer today than it, it has been here at Dell Diamond. That wind is gone. The yeah, it's much warmer. definitely increasing out there in the sun. There's J.F. Caron, the man who won event number one. The elephant bar deadlift. Always a consistent performer. You know with Jeff, you're always going to get a competitor that's giving 100%. There's no, no weaknesses. Just always managing to, to, to be there or thereabouts in every major contest there is. To Corone, coming in in said fifth place overall. 12 total points. He's just... Two points back of Brian Shaw, who is in fourth. Three points back of Alexei Novikov, who sits in second. And he's five points back of Martin Vlitsis, who is your overall leader. I think it's fair to say Karen's best day was day number one. He knew that the deadlift was without question his favorite event. His dumbbell has improved a lot. He's going to be steady today. I think he'll struggle to break into the top three, but he wants to make sure He's fighting for fourth and fifth position. He won't want to let the guys behind him catch him up. And with people like Kiliashkovsky on your tail, that's never easy. He's fighting for that big prize money. If he can get fourth place today, I'm sure he'll be extremely pleased. But he needs a big performance on this one. He knows what he's got to beat. First of three events for these men today. A busy day for them. Like you said, this will affect how you perform later on in those final two events. Absolutely. You want to perform well on this, you get to go last or near last on the next event. And the next event is probably one of the hardest ones to predict this weekend because they are all very good at either yoke or log. I haven't seen those two events put together before as part of the medley. And as I said, this event, the Wheel of Pain, very taxing on the energy system, the lactic acid buildup that they're going to have in their quads. That could affect their speed on the yoke, their ability to drive hard on the log. And although the log is, a, people think of it as a shoulder event, there's some athletes very strong in the shoulders and triceps, others that require a lot of power out of their legs. Here goes J.F. Caron, trying to beat Kieliszkowski's top mark of 83 feet six inches not looking too quick on this well, hopefully he's kind of got his strategy right but I don't think this looks good he is not off to a quick start a little bit higher in his chest than some of the other guys he's gone into a different technique he's not allowed to do that and there's the referee stopping him He's got to keep his hands on the bar. And this is not going well for J.F. Caron. Yeah, and is, again, he's being told he can't yeah. put his shoulder on by the judge there. This is good news for men like Luke Stolman and Rob Kearney, guys, who, and Kielich Koski, guys who are all trying to chase Caron in the overall that's, standing. That's a disaster there he's for Caron. He's going to call it. He is not going to be happy with that. After a great start on day one, his arm there. I hope he's okay. Just undoing those straps. But you can see that the athletes have been told before this they have to keep their hands 
on the bar. They're not allowed to just drive the shoulder in. And you saw two times there, J.F. Cron trying to change his technique and the referee's not allowing it. In the past, when the, the wheel of pain first showed up in 2019, that was allowed. But Cron right now with an unofficial score of just 24 feet. And just didn't... He couldn't figure this thing nope, out. He, he really couldn't. We can't make excuses for him. This is not a solid performance at all. A little bit higher in his positioning there. He just he seemed to burn out far too quickly. Very explosive, very powerful athlete, great deadlifter as we saw yesterday. Truck pull and, and pushing vehicles have never been his best events. But I still expected more from him on this one. This is where the Steve Slater was telling him, you can't put your shoulder on. He had to get his hand back on there and it just cost him precious seconds. Yeah. Yeah, just, just not a good performance there from J.F. Caron. Caron already has an event win under his belt with the Rogue Elephant Bar deadlift, but now it's looking like he's going to finish at or near the bottom here in event number three as Brian Shaw will be up next. Shaw, fourth place overall, 14 total points as Jeff Caron tries to rest up and get ready for the next event. Mateusz Kieliszkowski is currently your leader in the event. He needs those big points today, but now we've got our top four coming up. Brian Shaw up next. Brian picked up a, a small hamstring injury yesterday. He's still competing, still pushing on. And I think knowing JF was just behind him, he's probably reasonably happy that it's only 29 foot that he's got to be. I'm sure he feels confident he can beat that. It's been a few years since we've seen Brian on this piece of kit. Perfectly built for vehicle pulls and pushes. Didn't do that well last time he tried in the Arnolds, but he's a man that once he tries something once, he learns from it. He's a very experienced athlete. He knows he needs a big performance today. He's been on the strongman scene since 2005, 16 years of experience. He's trying to gain some points on Alexei Novikov and Tom Stoltman, as well as Martins Leedsies. Brian Shaw, 14 points coming into this event one point back of both Novikov and Stolman for second. Yeah, only one point off. He needs to win this one against those guys because he they they all know this is good events for Lishis, for Novikov. Potentially for Tom Stoltman. He's an unknown quantity on this one because he's not done it before, but he's built perfectly for it and he's done well on similar events. So big Brian Shaw knows he needs to perform here. Worst case, he needs to be in second place after this performance. Just getting the chalk sorted on his hands, making sure they're completely dry so there's no slipping. So one minute before Brian Shaw will make his run on the wheel of pain. Four athletes remain after Shaw. Tom Stoltman will be up, then Alexei Novikov, then overall leader Martins Litsis. Ah! Ryan Shaw talks about being great. He needs to be great now. Shades are on, hands are chalked, ready to go. Yeah, he's getting himself fired up. He wants to perform here. good news is this event doesn't tax the hamstring too much as well. It's a lot more quad dominant, lungs, calves. So the injury shouldn't affect him too much other than pain, but these guys can cope with pain. Here goes Brian Shaw. Big strong push to get it going. And he has the body weight, he's got the leg strength, he just needs to keep pushing, he needs the endurance. So let's see where he's at, at around the 30 second mark. Working hard with each step. And 
is now passing J.F. Carone, creeping up on Jerry Pritchett. So we're at that 30 second mark already. You can see he's, he's still going. There's a, little, there's a little more body movement with, with Brian Shaw than some of the athletes. He's not being as effective with each drive of his feet. You look at Kieliszkowski, there was no movement in the hips. Every single time he drove into the floor, the power is going forwards. <coughs> Brian still working hard, but I expected better from the big man. He's close to passing Jerry Pritchett if he hasn't already. Upright position now, you lose that power there. We'll have to wait for the official score, but Brian Shaw looking like he at least passed J.F. Carone for sure, and Jerry Pritchett. And now he's the hope that that is good enough for him to pick up some points on the men who are in front of him on the overall leaderboard. I don't think Brian will be too pleased with that. He's, he's picked off Pritchett and Carroll there, but with three incredible athletes to come, Unfortunately, I don't see big points coming Brian's way from the Wheel of Pain. One more look at Brian Shaw's effort here on the Wheel of Pain. You see there's a lot of shifting from the hips there. He wasn't getting as much power as some of the athletes were through each step. Huge, powerful individual Brian is. Maybe trying to protect that hamstring. You can see just under his shorts there, it's taped up. He said it shouldn't affect the, the hamstring too much, but there's always some carryover. Even if it's just a pain factor, maybe trying to favor the left leg a little more. It's starting to lose there the conditioning. And when they stop, they try and start again, and you just see how much slower it is. Mentally fatiguing, physically fatiguing, fighting through the injury. It's not where you want to be when you're up against the absolute best on the planet. Brian Shaw is now done with the Wheel of Pain, and hoping that he can remain inside the top five. The good news is that he did beat J.F. Carone, the man who is right behind him in the overall standing, so he won't surrender any points to him. And now we are moving into the top three athletes is Tom Stoltman, and Alexei Novikov and Martins Litsis coming up. It's going to be Novikov who is up next. This is where things get serious now. These three gentlemen yesterday, they really were the standout athletes. Two of them have been the most standout athletes of the last two years, and Lishis was the man everyone was talking about dominating the sport. Unfortunately, picked up an injury, and it's been an, a nearly a two-year break from him. But yesterday, it was like he's never been away. That consistency that we've always expected from him. He's not won an event yet, but he's in top position overall. 17 points on the leaderboard. Novikov and Tom only two points behind on 15. I believe this is our battle for top three. And whoever can go into the lead after this event is going to be in a very, very strong position. Alexei Novikov finished sixth in the elephant bar deadlift with a lift of 861 pounds and then cleared the sear bell ladder, finished with a 300 pound dumbbell lift, and he did it in less than a minute yesterday truly breathtaking but he's not in the lead Lishis is in the lead 17 points and it's that consistency that's important and I would say for all three of these athletes their worst events were yesterday Novikov's weakness being the deadlift particularly where the, the elephant bar where you're not allowed to use the super suits still scored good points I know from talking to him beforehand, Lysis was worried about the deadlift, and he performed exceptionally well there, placing third. Tom Stoltman was worried about the dumbbell. He's come into this contest in second place after day one. And Stoltman had a great performance for him for being worried about the, that event in the, uh, in the Sear dumbbell ladder. Finished fifth. Absolutely, and all three of these guys are very good at today's events. Hard to pick a winner between them. It's going to come down to who wants it more, who doesn't make a mistake. In this event, it's all about who wants it more. 
Alexei Novikov is now getting ready for his crack at the Wheel of Pain. Novikov, the 2020 World's Strongest Man, tied for the youngest World's Strongest Man. He was 24 years old when he won. I believe he's our youngest competitor this week. Amazing prospect. Already he's starting to dominate. This year he's been the most impressive and consistent athlete we've seen almost on the podium in nearly every single show he's done. Here goes Alexei Novikov. Very hard. He's an athlete with great stamina, great endurance. I believe he's got the conditioning to keep this type of pace up. And this is a great starting pace for Novikov. Just 15 seconds in and he's already passed. Lying. J.F. Perone coming up on Pritchett and Shaw very quickly. Those are slightly bigger steps now. It's slowed down ever so slightly, but he needs to keep working. He's not done enough yet. He's got to keep driving with every step. Shivlikov's mark there. Goes past. He's got to keep working. He sees the markers. Every single step is agony now. You can see the pain there. That speed has come right out of him, but he's still moving this implement. He can see the marker. Judge there, Magnus Ver Magnus, one of the legends of Strongman, pointing out to him that even the great Novikov and his supreme conditioning looking tired there. He saw the mark of Luke Storm, and does he get past it? That is going to be extremely close. Right now, it doesn't look like he had made it, maybe a little less than two feet short, but we'll wait for the official score. Alexei Novikov, 72 feet, unofficially, currently sits in third place in this event. Let's see the official score there. He saw the mark of Luke Stoltman. Is he ahead? Or? It does look yes. like he is going to be ahead of Luke Stoltman once that score updates. So Novikov looking to be in second place with two athletes to go, and that is right where he needed to be after that effort. And it shows how impressive Matiushi's performance earlier was. It's always hard when someone goes out early to really appreciate how good it is. But now with, what have we got, eight athletes being, Kilishkovsky still in the number one position, only two men to go. A really good pace right out of the gate here for Novikov. Yeah, he came out flying, but as all the athletes have, around that 30 second mark, lactic acid kicking in, the body saying, I've got no more, and he had to mentally push, keep driving. You'll see he almost gave up. I think in the corner of his eye, he saw the marker of Luke Stoltman's, and he thought, I can do it. I can push that little bit harder to get that extra point. And that's the advantage of going later on. I'm sure if he was going out first, then he would not have done that. Well, this is where it started to slow, but he was able to keep forward momentum on that thing. That was huge for him. Absolutely. Seeing the markers, you just, in your head, you think, OK, I've got a little more. And this is when it got really hard. He stops just about now. But you can see Magnus there pointing out the marker. Rolls back slightly, takes a breather, and he just drives hard one last time. Just gets past the marker of Luke Stoltman. And you can see again another, look at the tired athletes there on the floor, trying to stay out of the sun. As you said, it's much hotter today. I didn't expect to come to Texas and need a hoodie, but I did yesterday. It was very cold. <laughs> it was but chilly. The, the temperature is skyrocketed back up today. These guys just hiding from the sun. It's supposed to be somewhere in the uh, 80s Fahrenheit here today. And again, we had a, a really high wind whipping through this place over the last couple of days that helped keep the athletes cool and, and, and made it downright cold for Texas standards last night. But I think the weather that we all expected is starting to show itself here on day number two at the Rogue Invitational. And we have two athletes remaining on the Wheel of Pain, Tom Stoltman and Martins Litzis. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Tom can do on this. Luke Stoltman in second place currently. That's going to give Tom confidence. He knows how good Luke is. They obviously train together. They've used the train type of training system. He won a very similar event to this at World's Strongest Man this year. So he's got experience on these kind of events. He's just never been on this piece of kit before. So how does he feel at that 30 second mark when that lactic acid kicks in? He's one of those guys, if he believes he can win it, 
he can. He's just such an incredibly talented athlete. Great team around him, obviously Luke being part of that team, but he's got great coaches in his team, brilliant supportive family. And he wants it, he wants to prove not just that he's the best right now, but one of the best of all time. Tom Stolman tied for second with Alexei Novikov at 15 points. The two of them are just two points back of Martins Litsis. Steve Slater explains the standards, of what's acceptable and what is not. The athletes need to keep their hands on that rope section. That's correct. As long as their hands stay on there, they can be close, they can be from a distance, it doesn't matter. They can't suddenly push the shoulder in or turn around and go backwards. 27 years old, from Scotland, the current world's strongest man, Tom Stoltman, steps up to the wheel of pain. First time he has had his hands on this competition. And like you said, he's the X factor here. For me, this is the event that decides whether Tom has the chance of winning today. I think the next two events are good for him. This is the one. The Slight question mark just because he's never been on this kit before. Here goes the world's strongest man on the wheel of pain and a pretty good pace to start. So all the athletes look pretty good at this point. It's when it gets to that halfway point, then we know. First target is to beat JF Cron. He's coming up to that now, looking very comfortable. He needs to keep working hard. It's going to start hurting now, and this is where you've got to dig deep. This is where you've got to decide, am I the best in the world, or do I just want to turn up and make, num make up numbers? He's still going strong. He's passing more names here, driving hard with each step. Tom Stolman still going well now, and he's got the big names in sight. Needs to keep pushing. He's got 20 seconds, and it's still moving well. He's not slowing down. There's only one more man to beat now. He's closing in on the top, guys. 10 seconds left Can for he get Stolman. Past? I think he's gone into number one position. He's got to keep pushing now. He knows Lishis is just coming up. This is an incredible performance from the Scotsman. Tom Stoltman there. Huge performance. Who needs experience when you have the strength of Tom Stoltman? It looks like he will be your event leader with one man to go. And I said no one would be turning to the crowd celebrating, but Tom Stockman proves me wrong. The hand goes up. He's stumbling away there, he gave absolutely everything. But that is a massive performance by the current world's strongest man. And now the pressure is on Martins Leitzis. If he wants to hang on to his lead, he's going to have to at least beat Kieliszkowski. See, just a little bit of a fist pump there to himself. He is very, very pleased with that one. Tom Stoltman, I think, proving a lot to himself and the crowd here. And like you said, trying to establish himself as one of the best of all time. And this is going to go a long way towards doing that. What a great effort from him. Absolutely. I saw Tom compete last week. I interviewed him. I chatted to him behind the scenes. And I've never seen such confidence coming out of the young man. He's believing in himself and his abilities. He believes in his team. He has put himself within a great position now to challenge for this title. Only Martins Lisis left to go. Just a good, steady pace that really didn't slow when he reached, reached that critical halfway point. Exactly that. He was the only one we've seen so far at 30 seconds, 40 seconds. He was still moving. He didn't stop once. Kept pushing forwards. Did not allow that machine to rock back on him. Fantastic performance there. We've got Kieliszkowski's mark. He goes past it. Keeps pushing even then. That wasn't enough for him. He wanted to really set the pace knowing that we've still got an incredible athlete to come. Look at that. Believes he's number one. A lot of people have said the only one world's strongest man because the likes of Kieliszkowski and Lises weren't competing in that. He's got a point to prove. And there we have his official distance, 89.3. 89 feet. Tom Stolten beating Kieliszkowski by nearly six feet. 
And he will wait and see if Martinez Lietzis is able to get close to that. Stoltman trails Lietzis by two points. So he's got to beat Lietzis by two positions in this event in order to erase that deficit. But Lietzis has either finished first or second the two times we have seen the Wheel of Pain in competition. He knows how to move this thing. He does. He's a very determined athlete. Very strong legs, great endurance, does a lot of high rep squats, so he's used to that lactic acid feeling in the legs. Pain is not an issue for this man. He knows how to cope with it. In 2019, after winning this event, Leeds actually climbed up onto it to celebrate, <laughs> testing the structural integrity of that thing. He looks focused. Let's remind everyone, this contest, we have four World's Strongest Man winners. One of the most stacked lineups we've ever seen. Combination of, of the old meeting the new. Such an impressive lineup of athletes. And if you were here at the top of the show, you may have heard Martin Lisi talking about knocking off some cobwebs. It's been a while since he's been on the competition floor. Absolutely, and gym training is one thing, but being in the competitive environment is completely different. But he's coping very well. It's, it's like he's not been away. Lietzi's the last man to go. And trying to hang on to the overall lead that he built on day one with a third place in the elephant bar deadlift at 906 pounds. And second place in the series. Young aspiring strong man right there. Being inspired by these incredible athletes. standing right by the mark of Tom Stolten. That's where he needs to get in order to win this event. Getting the air in, deep breaths, focusing on opening up those lungs. He knows this is going to hurt. It's going to be painful. Looking ready to go, he's like a sprinter. There's Martins leads. He's knowing he can outpace any time if he wants to track down Stolman and off to a great start. Good, strong, solid start. And he's picking up some pace here. Driving hard as we'd like to see at the start. He's got to keep this pace up at the halfway point. Moving well. For 20 seconds, he goes past Caron. Pushing hard still. Slowing down a little, but he's still moving well, and he's got a great tank on him. He keeps pushing. His fitness is very, very good. We've gone over the halfway point now. He's in a good position. He's still moving well. Try, trying to creep closer. Kikilos Koski and He's coming. Stoltman. He's pushing well. This is a great performance. He's coming up with 15 seconds to go. Can he dig deep enough and get that first place? I think he's into third. Into second. Now he's got to work. Ten seconds left. He's pushing. He can do this. He's got to keep working. Drive with every single step. I think he's done it. He's past Kielos Koski. So that will keep him within one spot of Stoltman, who will win the event. But Lietzis does enough to hang on to the overall lead. Stoltman needed to beat him by two spots. It looked like Lietzis did pass Kielos Koski. We'll have to wait for the official score. But it did look like he did enough to hang on to the overall lead. Such a... The reason he's so dangerous is because there is no weakness in his performances. He doesn't have a weak event. So far, he's not won a single event, but he's always there or thereabouts. And he could end up being the winner today without winning an event, which is, it shows the standard that we're competing in right now, that every single event you're getting different winners. And there's the official markings. Lietzis passing Kuliskowski. Second place again for the Dragon. Tom Stoltman will be your event winner, picking up his first event win of the competition. That's huge points for Tom Stoltman. He, he will be all by himself now in second place because he was tied with Alexei Novikov coming into this event. And the real interesting factor of this one is Novikov dropping some points there. With Kiliskosi getting third, Novikov, I believe, in fourth. Just drifting off those top two slightly now. Well, the Wheel of Pain lives up to its name 
as the 10 strong men who go through this event are certainly feeling the effects right now. They will be feeling it. And as I said, that's going to be playing on their mind going into event number four, the Super Yoke Log Lift Medley. Take a look back at the effort from Tom Stoltman, who had never done this in a competition, proved that experience didn't matter when it comes to just pure heart, grit, and strength. Absolutely incredible performance. Built for this type of event, he's a hugely big, powerful man. He's trained hard on similar type events, and he's done very well on similar type events before. That training has transitioned well into the Wheel of Pain. Massive, massive points for Tom Stoltman, the current world's strongest man, going into first place. And this is where you started to think he had it, because this is where we've seen other athletes really start to slow down. That pace did not change. He managed to stay low, keep driving hard with every single step, pushing hard as well. Unbelievable performance from Tom Stoltman. Can the world's strongest man become the first ever winner of the Rogue Invitational Strongman event? He has creeped closer to Martins Leeds for the overall lead, and that will be a fun battle to watch over the next two events. Just one point unofficially separating the two of them. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon with your event winner. Tom, congratulations on your event win here. We spoke earlier and you said, all of us strong men, we expect the pain. But having this being your first go with the Wheel of Pain, what were the expectations versus the reality there? Yeah, I know. As I said, I knew I was going to win and I was confident. I've done something like this at Worlds, and uh, to me, this was much easier than the World's Strongest Man won. Uh, I didn't stop, and uh, yeah, I thought people were going to get further, to be honest with you, but you know, I just kept on going. You know, I was uh, thinking a lot of uh, dark thoughts in my mind and just kept going. You know, and I'm a fighter, I never quit, and that's. What I'm here to do today is just to fight with the best, and uh, they have to beat me, you know, so. You are fighting with the best. It is a stacked field to play. What does it mean to you to be competing side by side with all these guys, so many titles right here? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I won World Strongest Man in June, and then, you know, a lot of media and didn't perform very well, and then, you know, I had to come back strong and won Britain's last week, and I'm here, you know, fighting, like I said, probably the best 100% Tom Stoltman right now, and, uh, proving everyone to like kind of shut up and just leave me get to get on with it because when I'm the best, no one can beat me, so. Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much, too. Tom Stoltman moving into unofficially second place overall, trying to track down Martins Leetis, uh, continuing to creep up and continue to build his impressive legacy. Absolutely, the real improvement in Tom over the last couple of years is the mental aspect. Working with a psychologist, it's really paying off. You can see that he oozes confidence now. He believes in himself. We've got one hell of a battle coming up now between this man and the returning Martins Lises. The Dragon is still in first place overall, but Tom is right on his heels. I think we're in for an exciting last two events of the day. Tom Stoltman conquers the Wheel of Pain, picks up the event win, but now can he chase down the Dragon? Two events remain for the Strongmen at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. We are going to take a break, but stay with us, everybody. Plenty of great action still to come here from Round Rock, Texas.